This is the time of year when every shot, turnover, and rebound can become a highlight that is replayed for decades. Underdogs, upsets, these are the moments that make college basketball so special. ThePostGame.com presents the magic of March, brought to you by Xfinity. Surprising Seton Hall University in New Jersey takes on the Michigan Wolverines in the national championship game. The joke was like Seton who, you know, no one who knew who Seton Hall was. Everyone's like Seton who, you know, small little Catholic school in New Jersey. After generations of losing, Coach P.J. Carlissimo built Seton Hall into a winning basketball program. P.J. was great to work for. Both as a player and a coach, you always knew where he, you stood with him. He was very direct, very black and white. He really had a strong belief in his style and system of play. I covered that team the entire year. They started the year in Alaska, won the Great Alaska Shootout. The Pirates earned a three seed in the tournament and defeated Southwest Missouri State and Evansville in the first two rounds and would face Indiana in the Sweet 16. They played two great games, I'll tell you what. They really did. They just manhandled a decent Indiana team. I don't think it was one of Bobby Knight's better teams, but they were stronger physically. They were better defensively, which you don't see a lot with those old Indiana teams with Bob Knight. We win our two in, in Denver. We beat Indiana and Vegas. Now it's like, Wow, we're in the Final Four. Gerald Green was our point guard, who is a tough New York City, gritty, hard-nosed kid. His nickname was the General, and he was the General of that team. John Morton was our, our shooting guard. Again, another New York kid, thin, long. Andrew Gaze was our small forward, a kid from Australia. We had Darrell Walker, another New York City kid power forward, 6'8", you know, skilled. And then our fifth starter was this kid, Ramon Ramos uh, from Puerto Rico, a big 6'8", 250, low post player. Again, could step out to the perimeter, open up at, with Duke the first game. You know, we're probably eight, nine minutes in and we're down 17, 18 points. I'm like, oh my, you know, it's like you want to pull your coat over your head, like uh, not to be seen, because we, we were getting whipped pretty good. And the second half, ended up winning by 17 or 18. I think it was the biggest turnaround ever in an NCAA tournament game at that time. A stunning comeback against Duke propelled Seton Hall to their first championship game in school history. The Seton Hall, Michigan game, I mean, Michigan having the improbable run, uh, w w you know, with Steve Fisher. One of the best uh, national championship games I've seen, and that covers a lot of them. I, I covered 30 of them. But we were down a little bit, got back in it. With eight and a half minutes left, Seton Hall was down by 10. Made some shots late, go to overtime. Overtime, just two teams slugging it out back and forth. Michigan, you know, three or four pros on that team. With the game in overtime, a questionable foul call on Seton Hall put Michigan's Ramil Robinson at the line. To see that called, uh, it, it was really kind of a touch foul, a bump foul. And to see that called after the end of 44 minutes, uh, it was just disappointing, I'd say. I thought it was a decent call, and uh, I didn't have a problem with the call. And I always gave uh, Robinson credit, uh, you know, for coming through in the clutch like that. Robinson's free throws would prove to be the winning points for the Michigan Wolverines. Seton Hall's dream season would come to an end, but it would never be forgotten. It was a great season, but an incredible three-week run. We became America's team for three weeks. The 1989 championship game is another great example of the magic of March, brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity.